Welcome back to Final Fantasy V! Last time we beat the game! And it's been, uh, like a month since I've actually, uh, since we've done audio recording. Uh, because it's time for the bonus dungeon. So, as a note, uh, the game just automatically boots you out precisely right here, uh, if you have a, uh, cleared save file, so... You don't have to manually leave the final area. Which is mostly good, but I did kind of want to get a few levels leaving. But it is kind of a long trek, so... I guess overall I'm glad they don't make you walk that. Alright, so those are the setups for today. Uh, I would also highly suggest having uh, the Read Ahead ability from Oracle. Apologies for, you know, saying, hey, you should use Oracle, but, uh... Lessening random encounters might be helpful for you where we're going. So, remember this big hole in this, uh, in the bottom of the sea here? Right, there was a bunch of doors that we couldn't actually use whatsoever. Those are important now! They have unlocked- well, one of them's unlocked now that we've beaten the game. So let's see, is it this one? No. Is it this one? Also no. <laughs> Turns out you have to press the switch first. Damn, the room's an elevator. The world's worst, most violent elevator. <laughs> Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed the characters not talking, uh, because, yeah, it's the bonus dungeon, so we're not really getting any story, actually. Oh, sure, why don't we go inside? Okay, so, uh, I believe I've said it before in other Final Fantasy games, but, uh, if you are unfamiliar with this area of Square Enix, uh, they really liked adding bonus dungeons where there were no bonus dungeons before, and most of the time, they were very bad. Yeah. When did they stop doing that? Um... I was going to say DS, but then I remembered Chrono Trigger was DS, and they absolutely added terrible bonus dungeons to Chrono Trigger DS. Well, when was Chrono Trigger, like, in the chronology of the DS? Was it, like, before the Final Fantasy remakes on the DS? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't actually remember. I feel like it would have come out earlier because that was, you know, a... I'm not going to say a straightforward port job because a lot... Uh, probably went into that, but, you know, it, it's still the same sprite style as the original, uh, unlike 3 and 4, which got 3D models. But yeah, 3 and 4 had optional things that weren't great, but they weren't full-on dungeons. Uh, 3 had the whole Magnet thing, uh, which ended with you fighting, uh, Iron Giants. And then, of course, there was the, uh, Onion Knight class unlockable. And then 4 had some admittedly cool ideas for, uh, bosses, but, uh, I did not cover them, and I probably never will, uh, because part of it is they expect you to play the game up to three times to unlock everything. <laughs> <laughs> and also, management of augments and who they go to matters between those playthroughs. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not full-on dungeons, and I'm choosing to ignore them. Uh, but they still added really kind of tedious, uh, optional stuff to the end. Again, I think the bosses are cool in concept. I like the idea of Proto Babel. There's just, like, a miniature... A uh, giant of Babel on the moon that you can fight that's extremely tough. Though, weirdly enough, after Years of All Things, I actually think beats that out. Because you get to, like, fight a full-on giant of Babel in After Years. 
and it's one of those, like, you split the party to fight different sections of it, like, that's actually cool as hell. I like that. <laughs> I don't know what you have to do to unlock that one. It's it, it's probably tedious. It is the after years. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can just be normally good in the after years. It has to come at a price. Mm -hmm. After years is one of those weird things where it's like, I mean, I guess technically it's part of Final Fantasy IV, but I don't think about them, so I haven't covered them. <laughs> Unless I'm actively looking at the after years, I don't think about the after years. By the way, you can't access that enemy right now, the the door's locked. But anyway, yeah, after years is real weird. It gender genuinely bothers me how bad after years is. Because I really like the idea of it. Yeah, it's just like, hey, here's some new events that happen down the line, and we get, you know, some fun new characters. <laughs> But surely there's no Soul Eater in the After Years. Anyway, surprise, you were talking about terrible content they added to Final Fantasy IV and did not mention the Rainbow Pudding Drop. <laughs> I don't want to think about the Rainbow Pudding Drop. <laughs> it genuinely took me hours to find. <laughs> Nobody would have noticed if you just game shark that in. Uh, yeah, probably not. Question is, would I have known how to? Who knows? Uh, so I guess we'll actually get to this bonus dungeon. So it's kind of similar to uh, the actual final area, uh, the rift, in that it's basically just a bunch of different. Uh, tile sets, a bunch of different aesthetics pasted together in one big area, which, you know, was cool for the Rift. Uh, and I guess it, this is sort of the same thing. Sealed Temple's just a whole bunch of different areas torn away from the actual world or whatever. Uh, but unfortunately, in this case, they all form a big maze. I think the Final Fantasy Wiki has an incredibly unhelpful looking diagram of how they all fit together. Uh, so instead you should just go to VG Maps and just look at the, the big map and go, I don't fucking want to do this, <laughs> like I did for like two weeks before actually starting this. I don't like looking at Sealed Temple, just right from the word go. <laughs> I hate looking at it, I don't really want to navigate it, it's... <sighs> it's more simple than it might initially seem, but it's still not great. Hello, Belphegor, I don't know why you're not on a toilet. <laughs> you're just a normal-ass gargoyle, what's your problem? <laughs> I fixed my IBS! So... <laughs> Back to Square Enix and bonus dungeons in general. Did they ever get better at bonus dungeons, or did they just stop doing bonus dungeons? I think they just stopped doing bonus dungeons. Also, here's uh, just a normal ass gill turtle, which I'm actually not too opposed to this. I kind of like that they force you to fight a gill turtle, because uh, they're very, very tough mini bosses uh, if you happen to find them. So, you know what? Testing your metal against them, I'm fine with that. We have a lot more strategies to deal with them now. Anyway, though, yeah, no, like, they just kind of stopped doing them. Yeah, the most recent uh, remake that I've played uh, was the Live Alive remake. That doesn't have any bonus dungeons in it that weren't in the original. No post-game to speak of, actually. Yeah, I don't know what they are, but I remember there are, like, some end-game differences, right? There's, like, a few things that are different, but otherwise it's mostly untouched. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the things that are changed are spoilers, so I won't talk about them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I figured, but... Yeah, I remember something being different, but, like, n nothing tedious like this. It, it sounds like it's actually stuff that is interesting and yeah, it's something that you would want. a lot closer to a revision of the original ending than anything I would call new, even though it isn't really new content. Uh, also, the other uh, relatively recent Square Enix remake I played was Saga Frontier Remastered. And that does add an entire chapter, but it's not really a post-game. 
because you can play it any time after you beat a chapter. And in fact, you probably should do that, because that guarantees that it will immediately play the chapter you just beat. Anyways, Gill Turtle is still happening. Yeah. We're dying less to Gill Turtle, but Gill Turtle's gonna take a bit- Okay, there we go, Earthquake, he's dead now. <laughs> Pathetic Earthquake achieves nothing. He does give you a Grand Helm, which is actually a really good helmet. Uh, Stat-wise, does not have all the same status protections uh, that the Genji Helm does, but uh, well, it's good defense. <laughs> helmet meant for the strongest person on Earth, which is of course Lena, obviously. Who else would it be? Uh, but yeah, no, just like, in terms of bonus dungeons uh, I've covered uh, in the LPs thus far, Two really is the only good bonus dungeon, which is wild because it's Final Fantasy II, which is a, a very polarizing game, considering it's what inspired Saga. I was about to say, I just said nice things about a Saga game, so I have complex feelings on Final Fantasy II. I do think there is a way to play it with the original, like, uh, with the Saga-style stat progression that is fun. It's just a lot stranger and a lot you have to really understand the mechanics and maybe have a friend you can talk to that understands the mechanics yeah I do want to give it a shot again at some point uh, with less of being a teenager and being susceptible to you know everybody else's baggage when they complain about video games on the internet <laughs> I still think like the general dungeon design of Here's a bunch of dead ends. Also, if you enter the dead end, you start in the middle of the room. That's not great, but I don't know. I kind of want to just give playing the game mechanically another shot one day. But yeah, no, that's the only one that has actually gone, hey, what would be interesting to add to this game? And then they do that, and there's really not much fluff to it, so it doesn't feel tedious. It feels like a better version of what the After Years tried to do. Just here are some characters that you would like to see more from. So here's some more from these characters. Yep, uh, it gives a bunch of characters some really cool moments without taking away what they accomplished in the main game. And then you have the Final Fantasy 1 Dawn of Souls, and it's just, hey, here's four dungeons that suck ass. Uh, you gotta play this one four times. Uh, these two twice. You can play the last one once, but it's also the longest one, so it takes you for fucking ever anyway. I wonder if there are any ROM hacks for any of the versions of Final Fantasy 2 that fix Ultima. I forget, I thought the GBA version did that correctly, but I also don't remember using Ultima that much. I do not remember the specificity of stuff I used. The thing about Ultima is that the reason that that one coder, whose name we probably know but I don't know, uh, decided not to fix it, I like the idea of that. Sorry, I don't want to distract from this man. Okay, yeah, this man fucking sucks. We'll get to that in a sec. So, uh, here's this motherfucker. You think, oh, he's oh. gonna test you by fighting you, right? Nope, he wants you to fucking use capture from Beastmaster to capture a behemoth, which is an entirely different area. So let's teleport back to the beginning of the dungeon and do just that. So let's use time magic. Oh, you can't teleport. Oh, you can't teleport. Oh, you gotta walk out. Okay, well, let's do that then. Off screen. <laughs> Welcome to the post game. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So... You can do this in a less tedious way. You can start by going down the routes uh, where you can snag a behemoth. Uh, but I'm giving you the true experience, by which I mean what I did. And I could have restarted, but I thought, no, no, this feels important to how this whole fucking place works. If you're a new player, you're not going to immediately think to go for a behemoth. I feel like the the Square Enix approach to post games is, if, oh, you're playing a post game, you have no respect for your time, right? Absolutely zero whatsoever. 
Uh, so anyway, back to Ultima. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that Ultima is an old spell and therefore isn't as powerful now as it was back then. I just, it doesn't work in Final Fantasy 2. The game is not designed around that. The game is designed around Ultima being a good spell. You can't do that. Yeah, it's a good idea for a spell in Final Fantasy 2 because it works off of all the other magics you have. And in this game about building things up in the way you do, yeah, it's kind of important. Alright, so we've got a couple of warps right here. There's a whole ass path that leads to the same area we're eventually going to, and maybe I'll show that off just because if you use the teleporters, this waterfall area is full of tough enemies. Uh, here's Gorgamera and Iron Giant. Anyway, since we've talked about Saga and glitches, I have to mention the best one in the original Saga, where the chainsaw weapon was supposed to automatically kill any enemy with a lower defense than your attack. Instead, it automatically kills any enemy with a higher defense than your attack, including the final boss, who is God. Oh, that's so fun. And one-shotting God with a chainsaw is just built into the Saga mythos. There is official art of God from Saga 1 being attacked by a chainsaw, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, you might as well roll with it at that point. Like, damn, that kind of blows most of Final Fantasy's glitches out of the water. Because usually Final Fantasy is just like, hey, this whole ass stat doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you're playing Final Fantasy VI. Uh, I hope you didn't want magic defense, because you don't. You simply do not. That probably also happens in several of the soggy games. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that one just kind of sucks and should be fixed, but killing God with a chainsaw technically should be fixed, you know, that's kind of a big one. But also, that's too cool to not acknowledge that <laughs> you have to in some capacity. Part of the thing about that is that, like, the chainsaw is a gimmick weapon. It's not meant to be, like, you know, the ultimate weapon. So, like, if you don't want to do that, don't do it. Just don't bring the chainsaw to the fight. In fact, the game probably expects you to bring a stronger weapon to the fight anyways. You'd only bring that if you notice, like, Hey, this chainsaw seems to just be killing literally everything. Mm-hmm. Everything except weaker enemies. Ah, uh, but yeah, so, okay, now we've entered the door. Now we get a different set of tough enemies. Also, Yojinbo's still here, but he still sucks. He's just a man. Alright, so here's Behemoth. You know, in a way, I kind of understand what they're going for. Like, okay, you want the player to have used a wide selection of classes. You can assume pretty safely that most players are probably going to go for, you know, the heavy hitting classes. They'll probably have used Monk, they'll probably have used Knights, but, you know, Beastmaster might have fallen by the wayside, so hey, uh, let's maybe use a distinct gimmick from that, but A, that's tedious, <laughs> and B, couldn't Behemoth have just been in the area you find that guy in? Why is it all, all the way over here? I was going to say, I'm not opposed to the idea of making you actually use all the jobs that are in the game in the bonus dungeon. It's just that extra level of fuck you where they make you wander so far out of your way. Yep, you either wander or you know ahead of time that you gotta do that. So yeah, you can just go to the right immediately, nothing's blocking you from doing that, and then you can teleport, and then you can find, fight all the really hard enemies. But, yeah, I, I decided ultimately, I made the mistake of going left first. <laughs> I will do that. Also, I have more to talk about regarding killing God with a chainsaw in Saga. I mean, that seems like such a simple concept, but go on. In the mobile game, Romancing Saga Reuniverse, the human male characters can get a chainsaw skill that will always deal critical hits to god-type enemies. <laughs> also, during one of the events, Black and White Towers, a character named Aisha attempts to kill the creator, a god from Saga 1, with a chainsaw. It doesn't kill him, but his entire life flashes before his eyes, complete with him being killed by a chainsaw in the first Saga game. 
amazing. He has a fucking nom flashback to the last time he was killed with a chainsaw. That's such a funny <laughs> thing to have your creator of the universe do. God. <laughs> yes, everything is played out to my design. I've created this story, I've created this entire world. Oh fuck, oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, SMT's Yave is just like, This is why I'm a giant head in the sky. Nobody's allowed to touch me like that. <laughs> Nobody can dismember me. I'm already decapitated. <laughs> when is the Saga chain Texas Chainsaw Massacre crossover gonna happen? When do we have to recruit Leatherface to kill God? <laughs> Fucking... It's just, like, fucking Solomon Grundy in that episode of Justice League, where it's just some lumbering brute, but somehow he's going to kill a god. <laughs> just completely misinterprets something somebody says, and gets real mad. Uh, so, like I said before, it is probably a good idea to just have... Uh, read ahead on a character. Uh, and I did off-screen. Anytime I had to backtrack, I had that on. <laughs> but, again, levels are good. So anyway, here's this man. Uh, he doesn't need you to capture anybody, but he's still useless right now. So we have to keep an eye out for petrification curses that are so strong, they can't be gold-needled. Uh, he won't just give it to us, though, because that would make things too easy. So guess what this means? That's right, we're gonna have to backtrack at some point. Also, this area is a dead end, so you have to warp out. Again, there's another path that leads here, but it, that's a one-way exit. Alright, this game does have a little mercy on you at least, and we get teleported to the waterway. I mean, this sucks, but I guess that's better than just sending you out to the main hub. Also, if you're wondering, no, I'm not going after all the chests in this dungeon. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, this is, like, filling me with all sorts of energy to d do the post-game stuff in Dragon Quest IV. <laughs> That's so much easier in comparison to this. I never would have imagined this could inspire anybody to anything. <laughs> But you know what? That's good. I just have to do the last leg of a bonus dungeon multiple times, which is stupid, but it's not as actively hateful as this. Alright, so we've given this man a behemoth. He will now open the central door. Take that door. That's what you get for being locked, you prick. So obviously that's where you gotta head next. I mean, yeah, there's nothing on the other path. I skipped a whole leg of that journey, sure, by using the teleporters, but eh, I'm sure there's no reason to go back there. Surely the petrification man will never come into play. Fucking Johnny Quest reference jump scare. I'm glad somebody knew what that was a reference to, because I knew it had to be something, <laughs> but I just didn't know what. And I'm glad that me knowing it makes you glad and not ashamed that I know that much about Johnny Quest. Mm hmm Okay, so there's a big snake statue right there, so now we know what the Petrification Man is for. So yeah, now I gotta backtrack to that motherfucker. Well, hey, you got the Spaceship Gladius. That'll make backtracking faster, right? I feel like that would just crash constantly, uh, but it's actually a knife. It is the best knife in the game, and it's very fast, but we've got so many good weapons, I, I don't know if I'll be giving it to anybody. Anyway, uh, here's Rita Head. I don't want to fight things. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this was, uh, the second session, uh, that I did. I did first guy. And I just didn't want to fucking play after he told me to go capture Behemoth, and I <laughs> realized, oh, that's elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, this is two sessions. Uh, we're at the end of this one. I'm taking this at a pace that doesn't make me hate this game. Uh, I love Final Fantasy V, but I've never played this bonus dungeon, and I feel completely vindicated in that decision <laughs> now that I'm doing that for this LP. 
Hey, you know what I just realized? Because you did the DS remake of 4, you didn't get to show off the the dungeons exclusive to the Game Boy Advance remake of Final Fantasy 4. What are you doing that? Never. <laughs> you can't make me play Trial of Cain. <laughs> I, that's the only one I can remember because it's so stupid. Ugh. Look, if I ever LP Bravely Default, there is actually a leg of that game that's almost exactly Trial of Cain, except it's at least fine in universe. Anyway, end of episode. Bye. Why did they do that twice?